Hi everyone, this is Saptarshi and I welcome you on a video tutorial on back propagation. I am sure you already know how key role or how central concept that is for neural networks. So what we are going to do is we are first going to motivate back propagation why it is required. We will revisit gradient descent and understand what we mean by forward step and backward step in context to a single layer perceptron and then we will see how this concept can be extended to multiple layers all right so if you remember that if you have two classes c1 and c2 and if they are linearly separable okay so if they can be separated by a straight line then perceptron can be used to find such a line so if the line of the equation is you know w1x where w is the weight and uh, you know x is the input and plus b where b is the bias then a perceptron can very easily find the values of w1 and b okay but you know for separate uh, values of w1 and b you can get separate lines you can get a line like this or you can get a line like this so how do we how the perceptron learns this w1 and uh, b so it learns through gradient descent okay uh, so it has an equation like this by which you know uh, these weights are adjusted and final weights are arrived at so we'll discuss uh, about this up more in the next slide so let's park it for some time now uh, the question that can come in your mind is that is perceptron universal and can be used for any classification problem so here is an example where our perceptron fails so we can call this area as class c1 and this area as class c2 okay now how can we use perceptron to find such decision region okay so if you think intuitively you can understand that probably one perceptron can be used to draw this line and another perceptron can be drawn to or can be used to draw this line and then if you have another additional computational layer that can actually you know uh, track a particular point with respect to these two lines and classify perfectly so this was embodied in multiple layers of perceptron which is called as MLP. Now please understand that if this layer was not there, right, so if the input was directly over here, okay, we have seen that gradient descent can work and can find the weights associated over here, okay. Now the question that troubles us or bothers us is that we one side understand that we need to use multi-layer perceptron to make perceptron's general purpose. However, can gradient descent be used to find out these weights, okay? Weights of previous layers. So this actually motivates the concept of back propagation. All right. So let's start by taking an elaborate look at gradient descent, okay? So as I said that this is the key equation in gradient descent. So what happens is that, you know, these weights are learned from iteration to iteration. So these iterations in neural network terminology or language, we call it as epochs, okay? So basically you start with some random epochs and then you try to find out that with that weight, what is the error, okay? And then you want to nudge your weight or change your weight so that, you know, it is more close to the actual or the error is minimized. So this term is actually a shorthand notation. The expanded notation is like this, where you want to find out the rate of change in the error for a small change in Wj, okay? So, you know, Wj is a particular weight. Now, if you have 10 weights, so you need to find all the 10 derivatives like this. If you remember, the basic computational model of perceptron looks like this. So you have x1 and x2 as input, w1 and w2 are synaptic weights which multiplies these inputs the, there is an aggregator in form of j okay which also considers the bias then there is an activation function applied which can be a step function or a nonlinear function which gives you y okay so that is how the perceptron works in terms of equations so z can be written as w i x i plus b so here you can understand n is equal to 2 and then you find y as a function of z, okay, like this. And finally, how do you calculate error? So, error is nothing but a function of y 
which is the predicted value and the actual value which is given as t okay so now uh, this calculation as we started from x1 x2 multiplied it with w1 w2 went to calculate z then y then finally e okay so this you can think as a flow of computations okay and this flow of computations which you know starts from the input values and goes up to the error is called as the forward pass or the forward propagation okay now let's look at how we can find out so we have found the error okay now how can we find the derivative of the error with respect to w okay so here we need to revise some concepts of calculus so let us say you have a variable u which is a function of z so u is z square so you already know du dz is 2z and z is function of is a function of uh, x which is 2x plus 3 now if i want to calculate the derivative of u with respect to x we can find that by calculating du dz and dz dx okay and it can be seen that it can be extended also so you know if there is another variable v which is a function of u i can calculate dv dx or derivative of v with respect to x as dv du into du dz into dz dx okay so this rule is called as the chain rule of derivatives okay so now let us see that how this is useful to calculate this particular uh, quantity okay all right so first of all please understand that we are trying to find out del e of del w so we can find del e of del y right and y is a function of j so with that i can calculate del j and then z is a function of w1 so that's how here also the chain rule will be required okay and also please note one of the things so we are not using the symbol d over here but this small you know delta like symbol so why we are doing that because this is a partial derivative okay so when we want to update all of w1 w2 and b we actually need to calculate daily del w1 daily del w2 and daily del b okay and for doing that when we are calculating daily del w1 so this is one then we are going to keep w2 and b as constant okay so that's why we call it as partial derivative as all other variables are kept as constant okay all right so now uh, let us see that how this calculation happens so here also we apply the chain rule daily del w1 is daily del y into del y del z into del z del w1 okay so we calculate daily del y here then we multiply this with del g del y okay here right then we again find out del g del w1 and the product is actually daily del w1 so now this one what is happening is that we are calculating the derivative here this is again flowing here so there is another computation flow that is happening that there is another computation flow that is happening and this is in the backward direction okay so this we call as the backward pass or the backward propagation so what actually we tried to establish so far was that even when we are using a single layer perceptron we were updating the weights using chain rule and backward propagation all right so this actually can be very trivially extended to multiple layers so before that let's also quickly revise the concept of vectorization okay so what we do is instead of considering x1 x2 separately we think that this is a vector you know x which has two elements x1 and x2 okay pardon my bad drawing all right now you know this x is x1 x2 w1 can be represented like this as a matrix okay so this layer of weights and this layer of weights can be represented by another matrix all right so it turns out that if i just transpose these two matrices so i just swap the rows and columns and then i do a simple you know matrix operation i multiply x1 x2 with w1 t then what can happen is i can find out 
you know the aggregated input so i can find out z1 and z2 over here right so we don't need to calculate z1 z2 individually we can find that by using this matrix operation again this matrix can be subjected to activation function finally they can be again multiplied with the matrix to produce the output and it turns out that when we calculate the derivatives the derivatives can also be thought as a vector where there is one dimension and when there is multiple dimension it can be thought as a matrix okay so this actually eases up the calculation however this is not something very very particular with neural net anywhere you are using machine learning algorithms you can uh, you know you can uh, represent the configuration of your machine learning algorithm in a matrix and the input is also a vector so you can use vectorization in those algorithms as well okay so let's look at three layers now and let's look at some of the you know notations so basically you know uh, each layer is superscripted with the layer number okay so here here you are calling it as z1 here you are calling it as z2 and these are nothing but now vectors please remember this right so these are not individual values okay so you know z1 the uh, activation function is applied a1 is produced a1 acts as an input and z2 is produced z2 activation function is applied a2 is produced and that's how z3 and a3 comes and finally you get the error from your cost function c okay and so this is your forward propagation and your backward propagation first you calculate the error with respect to del a3 then you go to del z3 you update this okay and then again you go ahead so this backward propagation is happening and you know the corresponding weights of each of the layers are being found out using this backward propagation okay so one other concept you know uh, for generalizing is the input is often represented represented as a subscript zero okay and the very simple equations are you know this uh, z l plus 1 is actually a function of a l so hidden layer uh, output plus the bias of that layer and of course the hidden layer of that or hidden layer output of that layer is produced from the linear output okay so i hope you know you could understand that back propagation is not something new with uh, multi-layer perceptron here the chain rule is uh, being applied so this actually brings a uh, few problems also which we'll discuss in our uh, next series of lectures so thanks guys uh, for watching this video please feel free to give your comments and if you find it helpful do subscribe and like